All right, everyone, welcome back to the channel once again. Another SWY, you know, coming at you. Now, we just covered the iPhone 6, 6S, and the iPhone 6S Plus. Now, the last kind of current iPhone I wanted to talk, well, not the last one, but the older kind of one I wanted to talk about is the iPhone SE. Now, I will probably try to do an Android phone tomorrow to kind of switch things up a little bit. But as of right now, you guys already know my opinion on the SE. It's probably one of my favorite phones ever released. It was, you know, one of the best phones at the time, in my opinion, in terms of the concept, because it took pretty much the same parts of the newest iPhone and some of the parts of the older iPhone, combined them, put them in a smaller form factor. And that was, I mean, we it's still so relevant today. And so many people, every time I drop an iPhone SE 2 video, so many people watch it, meaning there's still so much demand for a smaller sized phone. And the greatest thing about the iPhone SE is that, you know, there were actually reports early on this year and even like mid 2019 that the iPhone SE was not going to be getting iOS 13 officially, but that ended up not being true. We ended up getting iOS 13 officially on the iPhone SE. So that's a pretty big change right there. We've also seen the new iPhones come out and I haven't done a full comparison between the SE and the newest iPhones yet. That should be coming out tomorrow or the day after, but I still wanted to talk about this phone just because it's so important and I love this phone so much. Now, everything you love in this world, you can always find things to hate on it. And I'm not really hating on this phone, but there are some things that I find a little quirky and now in 2019, well back in 2015 it probably wasn't that big of a deal. So this phone did come out four years ago in 2015 and it came out right after the iPhone success and it uses the same pretty much internals of the iPhone success which is really really cool. Now looking on the outside you have a 4 inch panel on the front. It's not the highest resolution thing, it is an IPS panel, there's no true tone display, there's nothing like that, but it gets the job done, you know, I think it's a pretty decent panel at that, but you can tell it looks like the iPhone 5S, you know, it uses that same type of body, so it's not the, you know, ugliest thing in the world, in my opinion, I think the 5S definitely looks super classic, I mean, it's a classic looking device, but Obviously, the newest devices look so much better. The iPhone 11, the 11 Pro, iPhone XS, those phones do look really, really good because of the removal of the home button and bezels and all that stuff you guys already know. But I think the SE definitely still kind of looks kind of good in its own way. You have the headphone jack on the bottom, which a lot of people probably still like. You have the lightning port on the back, single camera glass on top and bottom but just aluminum everywhere else and this phone doesn't feel like a cheap phone it still feels like a pretty premium device at that and i don't want to sit here and say like oh my god this is the ugliest looking thing but i also don't want to say this is the best looking thing i mean back like two years ago when the before even the iphone 10 came out we were already kind of accustomed to that iphone 8 iphone se iphone 6s type of layout home button on the front thick bezels but as of right now i mean this isn't the best looking phone you know but i don't think it looks that bad but it definitely Definitely looks a bit outdated for sure you know just like i said about the success and the success plus but i think it looks kind of adorable in its own way guys I, th I think it's just me now moving on to the software okay now this phone like we stated you know started off with ios 9 i believe and right now it is on ios 13 officially like i stated we didn't even know if it was going to get ios 13 we thought it was just going to stop at ios 12 but apparently okay and this is my opinion there's really no way to verify this first of all it's going to get all of ios 13 okay that's a given we already know that so it's going to go until about june of this year so you know maybe apple will keep it extending up ios 13.4.2 like they did with ios 12 but as of right now i'm unsure if it's going to be getting ios 14 i think it's more so on the track that it's not going to be getting ios 14 and it really i haven't really put too much thought into this but i, I still have to make a whole video about this the last time i said the iphone 6s and 6s plus were probably going to get ios 13 and i thought the iphone 6 and 6 plus were not going to get ios 13 which I ended up being right, but I have to do a little bit more research on it. But the thing that kind of keeps me in check with this is that because the new iPads came out with the Apple A10 Fusion chip, which is the same as the iPhone 7, I feel like Apple's going to extend that an extra year and I don't see them extending the iPhone 6S an extra year. So if that kind of makes some sense, I mean, I know they did the 5S and all the S series an extra year, but the 7, I feel like they're going to have to extend that for an extra year because of that iPad using the same chipset. So they're going to have to do that. And I don't see them extending both phones, the 6S and the 7, back to back extending those extra years. I don't know. I said extra years like 50 times, but that's kind of what I'm thinking. Maybe I'm completely wrong, but that's kind of a little bit what's going on in my head. But whether it does extend or not, this phone is still super capable in my opinion, and you're still going to be getting updates through the app store. So whatever you get, I mean, you're going to be fine. Even if it does end on iOS 13, I think you'll still be fine. Like, I don't think you're going to be like, oh my God, this phone is so outdated, whatever. I don't think, I hope iOS 14 is a huge refresh, but even if it's not, I think you'll be perfectly fine. 
getting your updates through the app stores with your apps and all that stuff. So that pretty much covers that in terms of the software updates. Now looking at the actual performance of this phone now, this is going to be super interesting. Like I said, same internals of the iPhone 6s, the Apple A9 chip, a dual core CPU, and two gigabytes of RAM. And what I can tell you is without a doubt, the iPhone SE is still a super capable phone. It's not the most powerful phone on the market, but I think for the price and the age of this phone, you know, especially compared to the newer iPhones or what you're getting from those, I think this phone is still a very capable phone. You know, when I'm doing like light, you know, web browsing, when I'm going through apps, this and that, when I did all my speed comparisons, when I did everything, I noticed, I mean, it's not like a slow phone, like unless you're comparing it to like an iPhone 11 Pro, maybe you'll see a little difference. But I think overall, when you're just using it or, you know, you're going about your day, you're using your phone, you're this and that. I don't think it's a bad phone. I don't think it's a slow phone at all. Even getting into some like higher intensive gaming, like when I'm playing like Real Racing 3 or when I'm playing some other crazier game like Nova or something, I don't see this phone really glitching up as much as, you know, an iPhone 6 would or, you know, an older phone at that. It's definitely, I don't think it's as smooth like i said as an iphone 11 but i don't think it's trying to be that and while you're using this phone you're not thinking of an iphone 11 when you're using it you're thinking of like a hundred dollar phone or eighty dollar phone when you're using it so i think we all kind of know where that's coming from the iphone se in my opinion really the only gripe might be actually i, I don't even know like i when i'm just thinking about it, maybe it's the ram two gigabytes that's pretty decent for an iphone but you know as we're getting more and more you know sophisticated in phones we're going to probably need more and more RAM and it's not a bad thing to have more RAM. So maybe that's the only thing limiting you. But I've always found when I need something on the iPhone SE, when I'm flipping through screens, one interesting thing is that compared to basically all my other iPhones, for some reason, I don't know why, the iPhone SE, when I'm going through the home screen, it just seems like it's less glitchy on the home screen when I'm flipping through the pages rather than versus all my other iPhones, which is so crazy. Even my iPhone 11, when I'm switching through the screens, it just kind of like stutters here and there. It's smooth still, but it's a little stuttery. iPhone SE, I've never had that issue, which is really weird. I feel like ever since iOS 12, it's been super smooth so what i can tell you is performance wise i think it's still very very decent obviously not as great as an iphone like 8 or iphone 11 or anything like that but i don't think it's trying to be that i think it's trying to be its own thing and when you make sure the price and the age and the size and the speed i think it's a pretty decent package in my opinion and that kind of covers up that let's go ahead and talk about the camera sensor which i'm just going to hit on super briefly i think it's still a very decent camera sensor in my opinion i'll look at a photo i'm like is it a good photo yes it is if it's not then no i can tell you every photo i've ever taken off this thing has been pretty decent you have a 12 megapixel sensor on the back. You can shoot 4K videos. You can do all those sorts of things. I mean, it's a good camera. I don't know about all these like exposures and that. All I know, it's a very good camera. The only issues, in my opinion, are that there's no portrait mode. There's no night mode. There's no 4K 60. But I, I like I said before, I think it's still a very good phone for the age. There's no like 4K at 120 or something like that. But I think it's a still a very good camera. I think definitely when you look at the Android side, they've always been better in terms of the features they put into their phones. But I don't think the iPhone SE is like a bad camera. Like obviously this is still a very good camera. But again, compared to like an iPhone 11 or something, I mean, there's no ultra wide sensor. There's nothing like that. So you're definitely getting pros when you're upgrading. Now hitting on the battery life. Okay. This is what I'll tell you. I don't think this battery life has ever been really that bad on my specific iPhone SE. Now I did buy it brand new, but I bought it brand new like a couple years ago and I'm still using it and it's still fine. And with iOS 13, I don't think it improved battery life, but at the same time, I don't think it hindered battery life either. You know, I did a battery test on this specific iPhone on my second channel on iOS 13. And I saw literally this phone had better battery life than my iPhone 6S, my iPhone 7, and my iPhone 8. It outlasted all those phones in my battery testing, which is super, super interesting. So what I can tell you is, is that in terms of battery life, in terms of just having a video playing, it's better. So maybe, you know, when you're actually using your phone or whatever, maybe it's worse or whatever, but I don't think that's the case. I think the iPhone SE is still a very good or mid-range battery life. Just because it beat the 6S, 7, and 8 doesn't mean it had like tremendous, the best battery life in the world, because honestly, those phones didn't really have that great battery life either. But what I can tell you is, is that if you need to go through a day, if you need to go through I guess a day and a half, you could probably get it from here, but I probably would recommend keeping your charger around because you just never know, man. But ultimately what I can tell you is the iPhone SE is just a perfect package any way you look at it. It's fairly cheap for what you're getting. It still has 
quite a bit of performance in it. You're still getting software updates, you know, up until June. We maybe it'll get iOS 14, probably not. But even if it doesn't, you're still getting updates through the App Store. It's not like all the apps are going to be uncompatible yet. Like I said, performance is still very decent. The camera is still pretty decent at that as well. I mean, it, what more do you want from a camera, you know? And you can mimic a lot of the newer iPhone features on like apps from the App Store now, except like portrait mode. But you can still mimic a lot of those features, which you might not even think of, like portrait mode maybe and the super cool bokeh effects. Like just because you don't have the latest iPhone doesn't mean you can't mimic those on an older iPhone. And from my testing, the battery was better on all the other smaller variants from the 2014 to 2017 iPhones that were released. Now, probably iPhone XR, those phones have better battery life now, but I think it's pretty interesting and I don't think you can go wrong with an iPhone SE. So I think it's one of the better value per dollars and it's definitely still worth it in my opinion. So if you have any questions or anything, leave it down in the comment section below. If you want to pick up an iPhone SE, I'll leave a link down in the description, the cheapest one on Amazon. I'll link it down there so you guys can get it from there and help support the channel at the same time. But that is pretty much it. One more other announcement, iPhone XR giveaway is actually ending tomorrow. So if you want to enter that, all you have to do is click that third link down in the description. It'll take you to a video. Watch that video explaining exactly how to enter. I just want to say thank you to you guys, but leave some comments down in the comment section below. Do any of you own the iPhone SE? Do you still like it? Do you hate it? Let me know your experience down there in the comment section. Hit that like button, but definitely hit that subscribe button. Check out the other links down in the description as well. But more importantly than everything else, I love every single one of you guys. And hopefully I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out till then.